Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. Today on the show, I've got Anita Serene here. I am so excited to have her here. We're going to have a discussion about all things Anita. <laughs> she's formerly known as the star girl, the practical witch, and she's a psychic medium with a specialty in numerology, astrology, and mediumship, and so much more that we're going to explore. This is the Dare to Dream podcast. I won the COVR award for the best radio and podcast show. It's currently listed in Welt Magazine as one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year, been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards and for a Webby Award. I want to thank Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness for sponsoring the show. If you want to do their energy work or become a facilitator, go to Dr. Dane here, H E R dot com or accessconsciousness.com. I'm Debbie Dashinger. I do media visibility work out into the world. I'm a book writing coach. I work with private and with group sessions to help you write your book and write a page turner. I also have a company that takes your book to a guaranteed international bestseller. And finally, I show you how to be interviewed on radio and podcasts and get massive results. If you are a light worker, if you're a healer, if you're a spiritual messenger, this is your time. I have a free gift for you all around your visibility so you can start getting out there with more ease. Go to debbiedashinger.com slash gift. It's D-E-B-B-I. D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R dot com slash gift my present to you. Today I am speaking with Anita Serene. She is a witch, a psychic medium, clairvoyant, tarot reader, and a spiritual teacher. Anita is an oracle for those on a hero or heroine's journey. An astrology enthusiast and tarot reader, Anita's spiritual video content has earned the attention of more than eight 177,000 subscribers, and sweetie, that's just on YouTube. We're not including TikTok or anything else. Her numbers are huge. Her main specialties are predictions, omens, numerology, and divine timing. If you want to learn more about her, go to her YouTube channel, Anita Serene, S-I-R-E-N-E. -E. Also, Anita is going to be speaking at the Los Angeles Conscious Life Expo, I will be there, and you will absolutely want to see her, hear her speak in person, and you could do it live or live streaming, and that will be in the show notes, how to get tickets for that, and with that, I welcome the beautiful Anita Serene to Dare to Dream. It's so good to have you here. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I am super excited. I'm pumped too. That is quite a list that I read there at the beginning. I don't know about anybody else, but for me, that's goosebumps, predictions, omens, numerology, numerology, divine timing. And I was teasing you at the beginning. That's like having a guidebook pocket right with you all the time. So I am assuming that means people come to you and say, I want to do this is the right timing. I want to have this new career, get into this relationship. What kind of things do people come to you for? So I think the most popular things people come to me for is definitely life purpose and as well as like soulmate relationships for sure. Mm, okay. And is it ever difficult? I'm curious. Is it ever difficult? Like you want to say to somebody, well, you're not going to really find somebody for five years or this is not going to quite work out for you. That must be a tough position to be in. Yes, it is. Actually, um, there are a lot of times where I see things, but I don't want people to think that they don't have the power to manifest what they want on earth. They absolutely do. It's just mm. that with astrology, I'm able to see the divine timing, the higher timing of when these things are going to manifest in their lives for their highest good. So their conscious self might be like, I want to have my soulmate come in tomorrow, you know, but their higher self has, you know, a bigger plan and it might not come for a few years. So it is very difficult to deliver news to people sometimes. Yeah. What is, this is like so off the beaten track, but I trust these downloads when they pop in my head. And this is a question I've never asked anybody but since you have a finger on the pulse 
it feels like like of humanity, some kind of matrix. What is going on with people exiting the planet through suicide? You know, our souls agreed to be here. And I want to say that I'm trying not to have judgment, but I also want to say it's kind of affected um, Twitch, you know, the dancer. Like I was just so shocked recently that um, he passed away. Amazing human, an incredible life he's created. Um, and yeah, it was just in the papers first that he died at the age of 40. And then all of a sudden it came out that he self-inflicted gun wound. But this is happening. It's prevalent. Is it just hard to be on earth right now? Is it hard to be human like us crazies who decided we could do be an earthling this life? Or is it is there something else going on? Wow. Yeah. I've, you're not the first person I've heard talk about the increased suicide rate. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that right now it's a particularly difficult time for everybody. Um, and you know, I, that's why I'm so passionate about my work because I feel like if we just all had a better understanding, understanding of timing, um, people would be more willing to hold out hope and not just give up. Yeah. Wow. I feel like I want you to repeat that. People just wait for your timing. That's divine timing. Can you say a little bit more about that? Absolutely. So one thing that, you know, God has really shown me is that our life is composed of seasons, kind of like nature. Mm -hmm. There's winter, fall, spring, summer. And one thing about life is it never stays consistent. Mm -hmm. um, you can have really good times and you want them to last forever, but they never do. You know, something bad happens because that's the ebb and flow of life. And it's the same thing when you're going through a depressive slump and you feel like giving up. Um, you have to realize that it is going to end. That's not going to be your life forever. Mm -hmm. And there's this quote I really like, I forget who it's by, but it's like most people give up before striking gold. Um, and that's how I see people who take their lives. It's really sad. Yeah. Yeah. Resilience is an amazing quality the, to be able to brush yourself off, get back. And the, what you're saying is basically hold on. It's not going to be like this forever. Hold on. I hope somebody needs to hear this right now and whatever, whatever reason that needed to come out. Um, and I know the world is filled with, well, there's a lot of us who are very positive and upbeat and we see what's going on as the underbelly showing itself. And there's a lot of excitement because if it's ugly and it's coming up, it's going to be healed. We need to see it so it can transmute. There's other people who get very scared about that stuff. Like, oh God, the world's going to be like this forever. I don't think it will. Um, so yes, it will change. And I think change is the one thing we can bank on. Everything changes always. Absolutely. So, you know, if your life is so bad that you want to end it, you're probably just a few months away from destiny turning this its wheel of fortune again and delivering you something that makes you so grateful to be alive. Um, and in the meantime, if you can develop like a connection to God or your higher self, that's going to help you get through the bad times. Yeah. Don't leave before the miracle happens. Miracles are possible. Absolutely. And you never know how your life is going to change overnight. Like mm -hmm. for me personally, you know, no one ever expected anything out of me. Um, I was, you know, homeless for a part of my life. Mm -hmm. I don't have a high school education. I don't, you know, no one expected anything out of me. And then, you know, I was this close to just going okay, I'm, I'm, I don't care about my life. I'm just going to go down a spiral. And if I die, I die essentially just whatever. And then as soon as I just was about to give up, you know, something I couldn't predict happened. Um, I'm going to cry, which is embarrassing. I'm like emotional as hell sometimes, but, cool. um, you know, my YouTube channel just blew up. I posted one tarot video and it went viral and it completely changed my life. Um, it just, from one moment, suddenly it changed. So if anyone's thinking like, I can't take it anymore, you never know when something is suddenly going to happen that makes life worth living. Thank you. Thanks for being transparent. That's, that's pretty freaking incredible. Homeless, not caring. 
didn't go, you know, to the PhD education, could stay here, could die. And then one you trusted to do one video with your gifts, using your gifts. I think that's pretty essential. And boom, here you are. Um. I actually feel that psychic gifts are kind of like a muscle. I think everyone has them. And the more you work out your muscle, the more it develops. I think, you know, if anyone did my job every day, you know, they would develop that strong muscle and be psychic too. It's just, it's just like any other skill. Like I can never do what you do because it involves a lot of personal ability. And that's a very weak muscle of mine because I don't really work it out. Um, so I feel like we have you know, natural skills that we can develop with practice. Love it. Yeah, I agree. I think it wasn't, uh, I had a psychic tell me I was, I've been doing the show 15 and a half years and I was about only one and a half year into it, something like that. I had a psychic on my show as a radio show. And she said, I need to tell you something when we're in an ad break, excuse me, you don't know this about yourself, but you're clairsentient. Mm -hmm. I never even heard that word before. And she said, spend three days looking up that word and then call me and we're gonna talk. And I looked up that weird word and I was like, oh my God, this just made my whole life make sense. And it was the most freeing thing ever. Like, honestly, I started playing with it, having fun with it, owning it. Um, it was really divine timing to learn that out and it set me free. So, so what's your definition of clairsentient for people who mm. don't know what that means? Thank you. And I can speak for myself. I think it can manifest a little different for other people. So I have claircognizance and clairsentience as far as I know. And what, so sentience means uh, sensitive. I'm very, very, very sensitive. That means I can walk into a room. I, the things I know, I feel like a computer and it's not like being a psychic, like I can, you, you can ask me a question and maybe I can answer it. It seems a bit independent and random that I receive downloads, like somebody has plugged something into me and just information comes in. I will know things about people, I'll know things about environments. I absolutely know good people and not good people. Like I get knows about things, I'm very protected. I can smell things. Um, yeah, so it means that there is this ability through the sense sensitiveness to perceive and know things. And then the cognizance is like, you know what you know, you just know these things. And once you're aware you have this and you start playing with it, it's like, you really start trusting it. Oh yeah, I know that. I, I'm not even going to question. I actually can see in your birth chart that what you're saying is absolutely true. Hmm. And the reason being is because in astrology, um, when we're born, we have a birth chart, which is a map of the stars in the sky from the place we were born, when we were born, etc. The psychic houses where you can see psychic ability is the fourth, eighth, and 12th house. Hmm. And your moon is in the fourth house of intuition. So you are very psychic when it comes to your environment. That's why um, your podcast on Feng Shui really spoke to me because environment for you, you can pick up so much in your intuition um, just based on that. Uh, and also with your 12th house placements of sun and mercury, I'm even willing to say you have dreams that can be borderline um, prophetic or give you messages as well have you ever had something Sometimes. like that mm -hmm. i'd love more by the way universe <laughs> i'm open i'm open that's cool thank you thank you for that feedback i appreciate it yeah it's, it can be very spooky but it's really fun i think um and so with the story you told, Anita, that's so interesting to me because you, even though you're, you're saying this history, I, you know, I didn't do this, I didn't do that, but you actually were taking part in spiritual practices at a young age because this debut video you're talking about, I'm going to give you the title, Easy 100% Effective, No BS Spell to Enhance Your Sex Appeal, right? This is one of your <laughs> videos. 
It was posted in April, 2018. And then bam, this trajectory, your visibility, your influence, your business. So it surprised you, but still somehow you welcomed it. You stepped into it because here you are. So talk about like, what was, was there a transition there? Or did you just go, hell yeah, I'm in, this is happening. Um, okay. So that's the funny thing about when you step into your purpose, you're not going to be stressed about stepping into your purpose. It was kind of like I was working this dead end job at a pizza place and I was such a bad employee and not on purpose that they actually, um, wouldn't even let me like make the pizzas. I was given some really <laughs> dumb, like greet people at the door job. Cause, and uh, you know, I just posted the video cause I thought it would be fun. I wasn't even thinking about where it was going to go. I was just like, this seems like fun. I want to do it. It feels good. And I think that's the thing about purpose is you're just going to feel inspired to do it. It's going to be like this feeling of it's fun, not, oh, I want to be famous or I want to get recognition. It's just like a feeling of this is fun. I just want to do it. You're not even thinking about the future, you know? Cool. I'm glad you did because here you are. And I want to talk about witchy things. So what does it mean when you say you're a witch? Because there are a lot of people who say that these days. I want to have a better understanding. So I think in the beginning of my practice, I resonated with the term witch, not so much anymore. I would, I would um, term myself as more of a mystic or a seer. Hmm. Um, I think that witchcraft is really cool because witches use like herbs and intentions and material things to manifest energetically what they want in their reality. And I definitely think there's validity to it. Absolutely. Um, but I think that, you know, I kind of drifted away from the term witch because I realized um, in my personal practice, I don't really need the physical representations to manifest anymore. Uh, not to say anyone who does is wrong. I've just kind of grown in my spiritual practice away from that. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> well, to tell me more because I, I told you earlier and I really mean it. I have this huge fascination. I think I used to be kind of afraid of stuff like that. Like I didn't understand because I, years ago, I assumed, well, that's dark. They do dark things. And, you know, I don't want I don't like anything dark. I don't want to be involved with anything dark personally. Um, the light, the light is very good for me. And, but I've had a much greater understanding. I was introduced to somebody who absolutely is a witch and I've worked with her a bunch. I think she's, it's unreal what she can do. And I'm, I'm moved by it actually. I find it beautiful. And I love even that we're living in a time where you can say that out loud and it's acceptable as opposed to, you know, in history when people got killed for it. So what do you use candles? Do you use oils? Do you do spells? Can you make great things happen? What can you actually facilitate? So actually um, what's happening is the material world is a solid representation of the actual energy world that we live in, which I'm sure you know of because plant medicine kind of shows people that as well. Um, so essentially when you, when you use a candle to manifest what you want energetically onto earth, the candle is a physical representation of the energy you want to move. So for instance, I mean, I have this, uh, this candle in my basement when I was trying to manifest a soulmate and it's this red candle of a man and a woman and it's supposed to represent divine unity and then when you burn that red candle it's supposed to manifest love into your life and it's not the candle that manifests love into your life it's the intention and the material 3d representation of the energy that you're conjuring around you, because, you know, a lot of people get stuck in their five senses of seeing, hearing, taste, touch. Um, but there's actually an energetic world that we are perceiving with our five senses and to manifest 
you use the material to move the energetic. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's not just the oil. It's not just the candle or whatever implement you're using. You're talking about there's got to be intention. And then do you also need to know how to create a spell that it's effective? Um, no, but you know, people will disagree with me and that's totally fine. This is just my perspective. So everything holds energy. We know this from science, right? Uh, this table, like right here, it's not even a physical thing. It's like moving atoms that I perceive as solid. So words have certain energies to them, right? That's why when you talk to rice and you say affirmations, it stays, you know, preserved. But if you talk to rice and you say negative affirmations, it turns rotten faster, you know, it's proven. So different things hold energetic vibrations and so do colors. So if you wanted to, you know, a color red has the vibration of passion and lust, it's connected to the planet Mars. So if you wanted to manifest love or passion, you would be using a red candle, not it's the candle that's magic. It's the the, the vibration of the red candle and your intention, because simply by thinking thoughts, um, it, it portrays a certain energy, right? So if you're thinking a thought of, okay, this candle, I'm going to burn it. And as I watch the flame burn, uh, the energy will be released and who is for me will be attracted to me. That's how it works. And then how astrology comes in is you can see with the timing of astrology when it's time for that spell to come in. So I have a lot of respect for witchcraft. I just don't personally practice it um, like I used to. So got it. But what are you capable of when it comes to magic or any of this? What are you actually capable of? Dish the uh, <laughs> Um, so I think I'm just capable like everybody else. Um, I think that certain people are more gifted with manifestation, um, because they are more open and fluid in their beliefs. Actually, I was seeing from your birth chart, you have a really strong ninth house, which is a sign of being very good at manifestation. You'll notice a lot of people who get success have very prominent ninth house placements like Jupiter, Mars, Venus, the North node. Um, people who actually have a harder time to manifest, you'll see Saturn in the ninth house or very oh, restrictive. Yeah. That would be difficult. Oh my gosh. I'm yeah. sorry for all of you out there, <laughs> but Saturn delays, but does not deny, right? That's absolutely true. Yes. Yeah. I'm a hobbyist. You know, that's true. And manifestation is really weird. Like there are sectors in my life where it's ridiculous. It, I can't say it's ridiculous because thank you universe so much for blessing me. So with, I'm humbled by it. It's, but it's people in my life are like, that's not possible. What I, some of the things just from thoughts, desire, and they're so subverse, you know, they're not this big attachment thing, but man, I'll tell you one thing. I am always grateful, like so grateful for who shows up, how they show up, what is offered to me. Um, for sure. And I say manifestation is weird because it's inconsistent. There are other places in my life where it's more work, right? And there are places where this flow is just like gold coming in. May I ask what areas of life are easy and not easy for my research on astrology? Yes. So for me, um, the two places that are incredible unprecedented really are in the medical field, <laughs> anything almost that has to do with any kind of doctor or procedure or da da da. And I have it like, it's not like I'm a big surgery person, but anything like that. Um, it's amazing what people say, Oh, you have this. I want to offer you that, you know, and I'm just, okay. It just comes to me. The other place that is is with gifted people and healers. I will have people come up to me out of nowhere or that I've just met who say, they just gift me with so much healing, readings, sessions, that it can be like a year of them. 
months of them. And I, yeah, they've changed my life. I mean, so that's, that's probably the most prominent that I'm aware of. Wow. That's, that's amazing. That's so cool. Um, I'm actually the opposite. I've, it's been, you know, very rare. I've had good psychic readings. Um, actually I've had psychics say really awful things about me. <laughs> so, um, like before I knew I was psychic, I went to psychics and they, they were totally off or just actually, I think that's why I do like what I do, because I know like the pain of like kind of having no one believe in you. And when I do psychic readings, I like to try to like bring out the best in people and believe in them on my YouTube channel. Um, so I think that's awesome. You've, you manifest really great healers. It's rare, you know? And um, yeah, they're, they're magnificent and I love them all. And I really like, I try to do something in return that I am good at because I believe in reciprocity. I'm not a taker, but yeah, all of this stuff, when, as it happens, I just sit back. There's also a lot of synchronicity in my life that happens around my show and around spirituality. And so I watch as that occurs too. It just happened again the other day. It's like, you can't write that stuff. It couldn't happen. It's like winning a lottery. You know, I'll be introduced to something or someone, just an idea of them through somebody else. And then literally in 24 hours, they've been manifested to come on my show or something. And it's like through somebody else, I haven't even reached out. And I'm just like, how is that possible? I'm so supposed to meet you. And I just, I'm a heck yes. Because you're walking your divine path, which is also very rare and amazing. A lot of people want that and they can't find it. And I can see from your birth chart, I mean, it feels like you are absolutely doing the right thing. You have a lot of spiritual placements uh, in your birth chart that are insanely crazy. Um, I actually got like this message for you of you publishing a book in like the next few years and of being super wildly successful. Um, I don't know if that's something you plan to do, but I was hearing that you're a natural writer. And if you published a book within the next like three years, it would be um, extremely successful. But yeah. What do you feel about that? Rita, so before I answer that, do you have any sense what the book should be about? Um, I th n no, honestly, I I don't. Okay. So I've I've already written four books and I've had a book dancing around. And I'm yeah, I've not I've I used to put energy. What I would started doing is I started writing after I did plant medicine, after I went to ceremony and I would just start writing and like talking about this stuff and 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 you know what? So I'm just receiving right now like that was a really good message from you. That was a really good message and I should stay open because I have a lot of stuff coming that's new in 2023 that I'm very excited about that I'm opening up to and that that may be part of what's going to unfold in this book. Um, I did, you know, I'm really excited to hear that for you because I, I really feel like it'd be really good, but also uh, I was hearing for you that, um, in in 2023 so starting march march april may you're gonna get this crazy inspiration to write and you're gonna like um and you can quote me on this later but i was hearing uh starting march of 2023 you're gonna get crazy inspiration to write and kind of like hermit yourself up and i think you're gonna like finish the book in the matter of a few months like five months yeah i really that feel that me. That would totally be me. Yep. I mean, I, I'm a book writing coach and I, I know people take years. God bless them. Oh, not me. But yeah, that would be me. And thank you. You heard it here, folks. So March 2023, if if you don't hear from me as much, that's what's going on. Plus, I'll be in a, I'm starting a new class, a six month class, spiritual, immersive, shamanistic and all of that. Wow, so, that's really cool. I know. I'm so called. <laughs> I'm just answering, you know, it's not uh, being logical about stuff really never works. It's like being a gatekeeper constantly on passion. And I just know when energy presents and that feeling in my belly, that, that excitement, like just trust it and move forward, trust it, move forward. 
it's okay. It's going to be okay. <laughs> um, um, I know you're really intuitive too. Was there, you know, like anything, any downloads you were feeling from my energy? Oh my gosh. Will you give me time? <clears throat> oh yeah, for sure. And I will. I love that you asked me. Thank you for even trusting me with that question. That is so cool. And um, yeah, I have a little bit, but but let me keep connecting. Uh, I want to know what's the weirdest request you've ever gotten work-wise? Um, you know, most of my work is not like personal clients. It's more like... Um, it's more online through YouTube videos. So I haven't gotten any weird requests thus far. <laughs> uh, I think like, what, what did you have in mind? Maybe I can think of something. Oh gosh. I can imagine um, the things that people need or are curious about. There must be some weird ass situations out there that I don't know, you might have to breathe through when somebody says what they want to know about or they have a question about or some wild situation they're involved in. We don't have to mention names, but yeah, I'd be curious like a fly on the wall. Um, the biggest thing is the twin flame thing. Uh, it's like, you know, they'll be like, oh, my boyfriend is a felon and he's robbed me blind and he does this and that. Is he my twin flame? No, that is not your twin flame. Like, um, I think that twin flame has gotten to be something that excuses a lot of abusive, toxic behavior in relationships. Um, your divine match is never going to be abusive towards you. They're going to challenge you, but also you're going to see growth when you're with your divine match. Hmm. Interesting. They're going to challenge you. You're going to see, see growth, but no abuse. Never. No, never. What other qualities? Um, so when you're with your divine match, I mean, so these are things that I just kind of hear from my angels. I don't really have um, too much life experience in it yet. So I'm open to being wrong. But essentially what I heard from my angels was that your divine match is somebody who, when you're with them, um, you're going to, you're going to see evolution in yourself. Uh, when one sign you're not with the right person is you're going to get stagnant or you're going to start to decline and it's going to show on your physical appearance. Like you're going to start not taking care of yourself. If you're with the wrong person, you're going to glow down your energy. You're going to become a shell of a person. And it's like, you're almost evolving backwards. They're going to make you revert to this unhealed child that you used to be. But when you're in an empowering relationship, um, from what I've seen, it's like you're evolving, you're moving forward, you're getting better. And it's not always going to be like, they're doing what you want, but they're going to challenge you in ways where you see that you are growing. Does that make sense? I've, I've never had a healthy relationship, so I can't talk from personal experience just as transparency, but I do know about being with the wrong people. And uh, when you're with the wrong people, you glow down spiritually, mentally, physically. It really does make sense. And it, so, okay, it really does make sense. So much what you just said, I think was really powerful what you just said, descriptor. and. Of course, I'm thinking about my relationship and comparing some of this, and so it feels good. And I just want to tell you that one of your greatest gifts, I know, so forgive me, because you're huge out there. You are such a lovely human. You really are. And God bless you. It's not easy to be human. It's just not. And I feel that it's not easy for you, but I also feel that what you don't understand is that this gift of your transparency and your vulnerability changes lives. Like you are an angel for people, my dear. You are, you being you, heavily gifted, heavily seer, heavy mystic, but also this gorgeous human side of you that most people as influencers completely cover up. 
You do not, you're so raw and real. Half the stuff you just said, and we're not even halfway through the show. It's so moving to have someone be this real. So I wanna say to you, your greatest gift is this ability to just say to everybody with no hesitation and complete authenticity, this is who I am, this is what I've been through. I don't feel very great at this. I don't feel very great at that. You are so gonna grow into yourself. Like, I wanna be around to watch the trajectory of Anita. I really do. Because it's magnificent that you are like this. Thank you. Um, I see that as a weakness, but it made me feel really good to hear you say that. I felt it in my heart. Yeah. And that's, that's the most important thing I want to say to you. So not a weakness. It is, and I hope everybody out there is furiously writing comments like, she rocks, because <laughs> it's true. You know, and I hearken back to something we said in the beginning at a time, you know, when people are offing themselves or, or depressed or whatever the situation may be, because, you know, it's a lot going on in the world and a lot of comparing and a lot of I'm not and this and that. It's, it's hard when you look out there sometimes. And then you've got someone like you who has a lot, right? You do have a lot, a lot of gifts and a lot of success and so forth. And you're also real. You're really on this journey as well. So it, it's a beautiful, beautiful gift. It is not a weakness. It's like a huge strength for you. Little wings, little angel wings. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Thank just you. receive. Lots of love. Just receive. Thank you. <laughs> Can you talk about decoding message, messages from the universe by understanding angel numbers, animal symbolism, numerology, any other ways that the universe communicates with us? Yes. Oh, my gosh. I could talk about this for hours. It's Good. my passion. Um, so you know how U-Haul trucks will have animals on the side of it? Yeah. Um, those U-Haul trucks are signs from the universe. I not sponsored, but, um, <laughs> but you should be. Yeah. Right. Uh, these U-Haul trucks will have like either moose on the side or like moths, like each truck is different and you'll see them like every day when you're driving around this animal symbolism on this U-Haul truck. And when you understand like the animals and the symbolism and what it means, everything in your reality is a sign of what's going on energetically. Um, so all I have to say is start looking out for U-Haul trucks. And when you see the animal on the U-Haul truck, Google what that animal means spiritually, because it'll have a really big message for you. Oh boy. That's so cool. You know, that's really true. I never thought about it much, but they do have animals and I have no idea the connection, except maybe it's something cool to look at. And then you see that it says U-Haul on it, but that's nice that it's also a way for the universe to give us messages. Um, what about angel numbers? I've always thought that was pretty interesting. Oh yeah. Well, angel numbers will mean different things for different people. Uh, mm -hmm. there, there's not like one meaning for one angel number, but um, I would say, okay, so numbers each have like a frequency. So I don't know if this helps anybody, but the number one is the energy of the sun, which talks about your confidence, your ego shining. Um, so each number has a planetary correspondence that means something different. I don't want to bore everybody with it. Um, but if you understand the energy of numbers, you'll be able to interpret your own angel numbers when you see them because it's very personal, you know, this whole 1111 thing, is it like overplay? Is it for real? What, it, what's the deal? That's a good question. Um, I think it's a little overplayed to be honest. Yeah. It came into my life like a couple of years ago out of nowhere, just right after I met the partner I'm with now. And um, yeah, I never really believed in it before. And then every time I turned around, it still happens and I see it. And I know some people say it's a really good sign. It's really magical. It's really manifesting. It's really, I don't know what it is exactly. I know it's two master numbers, but um, and they say it's number of angels. 
And I don't know really what it's supposed to mean, but it does get my attention. I always think, okay. Well, what do see. you intuitively feel like it is? You know, sometimes in the beginning, when it started happening, I thought, oh, you're telling me I'm with the right person. That's what I thought, because it kept happening so much. Oh, he's calling it this time. We're having this conversation at that time. And it was so random. Um, and since it still happens, maybe it's still just like, you're okay. You're in the right place, you know, doing the right thing. Absolutely. Um, see, I do know, like, um, I think that, so 11 is actually the number of the moon. And I know that you are a life path too, which represents the moon. So I feel that for you, 1111 is definitely significant because 11 is so prominent in your numerology chart. Cause when you put one and one together, it equals two. Um, but for some people, I think it's just like the universe is saying, Hey, I want your attention. Oh yeah. Cool. Wow. That's very interesting. I am so connected to the moon. It's beyond, I mean, I could tell stories about the moon, but I feel very much like a granddaughter of the moon. If I can say that out loud but I feel super connected. Yeah. That's interesting. That's amazing. So what other ways does the universe communicate with us? What can you tell us about? Um, so see, there's a fine line between, I think, psychosis and uh, being in tune with the universe. So I'm going to try to explain it in a way where people can take away from this, uh, they can interpret it and do with it what they will. Essentially, the world is your mind. Um, your material reality might seem like it's out of your control, it's outside of you, but everything is connected. Um, the people that you meet are all mirroring to you your vibration. It's not like, oh, that's a separate person. When you meet someone, they are mirroring to you a good or bad side of yourself. And if you notice like the good things you like about them, you're noticing good things in yourself that your ego won't let you see. So it's easier to see in other people. If you are noticing bad things about other people, this is something that I had to realize as well. You're realizing less desirable traits in yourself that your ego won't let you see. So essentially the whole world is a mirror and it's all connected. Pay attention to the, the handyman who comes into your life. Pay attention to the nail salon you're at. Pay attention to your hairstylist because they're mirroring to you an aspect of yourself and everything in this material world is a mirror of yourself. So everything is a sign. Don't just brush things off as being um, not a unimportant or just a coincidence. Nothing is a coincidence. Um, if you want a better understanding of what's going on below your subconscious, below your ego, start looking for uh, angel numbers, understand the vibration of numbers. It's the universal language. I'm so passionate about numerology. Once you understand the planetary correspondence of each number and its vibration, uh, numbers will start to speak to you in its own language, even with house numbers too. I will only live in a house that adds up to six or three. Um, because I understand that numbers hold such a powerful vibration. And when you see a number, it is telling you the vibration of the house you're about to enter, the car you're about to enter, even your phone number. Um, your phone number, when you add up all the numbers, it, it equals a certain number that holds a vibration of your energy. So I would say, you know, learn the language of numbers and realize nothing in your reality is a coincidence. Um, it all provides greater insight into your soul. Yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. You just said that I had an Indian man who was on this podcast and that was his specialty was numbers. And he was very kind. And after the show, he did a bunch of crunching. He even gave me a password, like use this password to manifest for you. And so I did, I changed passwords. He said, uh, tell me the license plate of your car. And I did, he said, terrible. And I, he said he wanted me to change the number. So here's something interesting. He wanted me to change the number so my car had mercury to it, right? Fives. And so I did. I got a new license plate. And um, 
my password totally different, right? Then that has to have a, a softer energy to it. And he did talk about phone numbers, 100%. He wants me so much to change my number. I'm like, I have such a good number. I don't want to. <laughs> so I'm sort of coveting my phone number. But um, yeah, he really said it would be better if you change it. And the house thing, yes, it's incredible what he can predict and what, what you guys have at your fingertips. But I have to say, here's the question. When you talk about that, for instance, my home or apartment, if I lived in one number, should be a six as well. And I think that's so hard when you're looking for a place to live, like that really limits things, right? Like, well, I can't take, I know this is a nice looking place on a great block in a safe neighborhood, but I can't take it. It's not the right number. So what would you do in that case? I love that question. I love how you're, yeah, like, wow. Okay. So practicality or believing in this, you know, numbers, which has truth, but can be a little woo woo. So I'm in a position where I'm lucky enough where I don't have to worry about children. So mm. I can't really say, but I know like I've developed such a relationship with my, you know, um, with God. And like, I know how my God communicates with me that I take numbers very seriously, but that's, that's my experience. Everyone's experience is going to be different, but, um, I think that, you know, numbers are something to really consider, like, because it, that's such a good question. I don't know. So what would you do? Would you, if, because I know he talked about a way that you can actually, I can't remember what he called it, but you could put a number. So let's say you had like, I love this place. I really want to move into this place, but it's not the right number. And I understand if it's not the right number, other things might happen that you might not like. It could get in the way of things, your health, your you know, many things you may want to have flow instead. And so he had a way that he would put a patch, a number patch. Do you know about that? Oh, like a Band-Aid. If you don't like your house number, you can just put a number patch on the back of your door or something like that. Yeah, it was something. And I don't know exactly where, where, where he would put it. I can send you his book. <laughs> I would love that. Was, yeah, he would do this, this patch to, it had to be like, he was a pretty upscale guy. So it had to be a way to do it, that it was really classy. And then it becomes very interesting because I live in a house with a partner. These numbers are great for my partner. So you can't really do a patch because then it affects him, but I'm positive and he may not be. So it's, I think it's numerology can also be interesting if you got couples, families, you know, everybody's got different stuff going on. And is there like a middle ground so that you can find something that works for everybody in a household? Well, I think you can't avoid like fate or destiny. So if you're meant to experience like um, mm -hmm. a bad number, quote unquote, I think that, you know, it's because you're meant to go through a struggle or challenge to um, grow and develop you, um, you know, I, does that make sense? I like that answer. <laughs> it's, it's not so much logically, but like, I like that answer because there's a lot of room in there. And, it, you know, when you're into spiritual stuff, at some level, you can feel a little cray cray, like, oh my God, I can't do this. I can't do that. There's this number that, you know, you try to do so much and implement so much. And at some point it, I think it's good to reel it in, which is what I did. Like I, fo I followed a lot of stuff that was recommended to me and, and I believe in it. And I think it's fun, frankly, but then at some level I had to go, you know, like I love living here <laughs> and it's very peaceful for me and I'm happy here. And the rest of it, I'll, I'll just let go of. And I think um, when you say destiny and fate, I like that a lot because as we all know, choice is really what's powerful. And at any moment, no matter where we're situated, no matter what our numbers are, we can choose and definitely go forward on that choice to make it happen. 
Exactly. Um, I think numbers are just a way for you to kind of get an overline. Like, you know how when you read a book and you read the summary of a book on the back? Yeah. Well, each chapter of our life is kind of like a book. And when you move into a house that has a certain number, understanding that number is kind of like reading the summary of what's about to happen. Each number has its good sides it's going to bring you, but it might also have its negative sides. Um, I think I am a little extreme where I only like stay in hotels or houses that have six or three. Um, I'm not saying everyone should do it, but I'm saying that numbers are a good way to get a summary of what you're going to experience where you are. I like it. And I think for people, especially if you're just starting out, you haven't done this number thing, um, it's incredible. So do you do videos about this? So somebody who's going, I want to know more. I'd like to have my numbers done. How would they do that? So I actually don't do uh, videos on that because it's like a it's actually a very deeply like personal practice I do for myself, but I, I do psychic readings on YouTube where I'm able to decipher signs and omens in the cards and give readings to people virtually, but I plan to extend to numerology in the future. Oh my God, I love it. It feels like a TV show. Okay, so I, I want to deep go deeply into that a little bit. Signs and omens and predictions. Will you... I'm a little nervous to say this to you, but like, cause you don't know what you're going to say or, but whatever, um, I'm game. Would you be willing to do that for me right now? Uh, yeah, I, w I would love to. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, sorry for which mode is there like a particular animal you've been seeing? Is there a particular dream? Oh my gosh. That's such a great question. So I just had something, I mean, honestly, you could have asked me that a month ago and I would have been, and I literally, thank you for being psychic. I literally just had something profound happen um, with a bear. And I would never have thought of bears, brown, specifically a brown bear. It was in, um, I work with a shaman. And the shaman was taking me through a journey. And I was in this cave where all this beautiful stuff was happening. And she didn't even say like an animal is going to present or she didn't at all. She was taking me somewhere else. But this animal showed and it was freaking fierce. I mean, it even bellowed like, you know, up on its legs. I was not afraid at all. I loved this animal so much. And it was so there. It's like everything I'd ever wanted in life to feel protected and like there was somebody there for me and just all these safe, secure feelings I felt with this bear. And so I just recently went out and bought a little toy bear that's on my altar so I can remember its energy and being. Yes. Wow. Um I don't want to, you know, get too personal or weird, but when you were talking about the bear, I kind of got, I could be wrong, but I, I got an energy of like a father. Um, I, I just kept hearing something about a father, but also I was getting the feeling like that's your spirit animal as well. Like the mama bear energy, <laughs> like feisty, protective, but also very warm and inviting and, um, you know, like motherly energy, but not like in a pushover way, in a fierce way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was exactly that kind of yell. I don't know what that is that a bear does when, but it, it actually would probably charge somebody if it was near their cub. That was that kind of, but it, yeah, there was nothing menacing about it. It was, all of those things you describe. Like warm. <laughs> yeah, and I did feel like that is a spirit animal. Like, whoa, I would have said lion or there's so many other animals I would have just thought of that I feel connected to, but. Mm. And actually on a camping trip, <laughs> I was once on a camping trip, like in the last couple of years, and it was really hot where we were. And I just, I couldn't stand the heat. I couldn't stand sweating anymore. 
And I said to my partner, let's just find this like river and go, I just got to take off my clothes and go swimming. And we pulled over, we found this great place. It was very remote. We scrambled down these rocks and I was literally undressed almost completely. And all of a sudden I felt this presence and I looked over and there was a teenage brown bear. Wasn't a cub, thank God. Because if, if it's a cub, the mom is close by and you're dead. End of story. But this thing was feet away from me. And it was, it was a teenage bear. And I'm trying to get my partner's attention who's like in the sun on the rocks. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> for so long and then all of a sudden it's like he went oh my god we grab my stuff I'm nude right I'm holding everything up to my boobs and we're running trying to run scramble up and it was amazing because this bear like whatever just walked over walked to the water boom and I didn't even know bears could swim like that because they're so heavy it was gorgeous watching it in the water couldn't have cared less it wasn't there to hurt me at all and I wanted so much to take video and pictures because it was right there. But in that moment, you don't know what's going to happen. So yeah, I wasn't going to do all that, but it's, it's presented now twice. That definitely seems like your spirit animal, your spirit being represented in an animal form mm. for sure. Wow. That's kind of cool. Yeah. And you know, what's crazy is people with spirit animals. I feel like they think it's one animal because they like it, but sometimes it's a completely different animal. So what you can know, what you can do to know what your spirit animal is, which is like your energetic vibration in an animal is hmm. you could ask the universe, okay, start showing me synchronicity in animals. What animals keep coming up that you see after asking the universe for the next week, that's probably your spirit animal. And like the characteristics involved in that animal is like a material representation of your energy. Yeah, you're totally right, Anita, because what you were saying earlier about look it up, and it's really easy to look up. And um, right after the shamanic experience, I Googled bear. What does bear mean? And specifically brown bear. And I read the description. I was like, oh, God, that's so perfect. That is so beautiful that that energy would choose to be there for me and exactly what I require. So I felt no, nah, I felt really seen and heard <laughs> at that moment. Oh, I'm so happy. So tell me more. What what else do you think as far as well, omens is kind of a or what is an omen exactly? So an omen is like it's essentially a synchronicity. It's like when you keep seeing the same animal everywhere you go every day, like you know, hummingbirds on your window on shirts and you're like, I keep seeing this animal or like an omen is like when you consistently see the same number synchronicity, like 1111 consistently for like a week. And you're like, why is it always this number synchronicity? Anything that comes up repeatedly that you're noticing for a long period of time is likely an omen. Um, and it's something important that the universe wants to communicate with you. All right, so pay attention, folks. So your predictions, I'm going to write a book in 2023. I love it. Not makes sense. <clears throat> she said, always the teacher doesn't want to do what she teaches. <laughs> and then, um, and then um, yeah, very cool. So you asked me a question about the animal, which was pretty spot on. Was there a reason for asking me that question? Um, I was just, I was just really curious to know if you've, been seeing synchronicities with animals. Yeah. So that was a big one. And anything else you want to say? Um, I think that's it. I just really hope I can inspire people who are listening to see numbers and animals as more than just a coincidence, but a way for the universe to speak to you and to start making your own interpretations. Cause it'll give you like a really cool insight on a narration of what's happening in your life, which is like a movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause something that you say, Anita, is that common symbol synchronicity that we see every day that strengthens our gift of prophecy. So you've already said, we've got the gift. You just have to use it. Exactly. I can say it better. Yeah, exactly. You know, 
one of the YouTube videos that you have on your channel, I found it kind of interesting, the title, and that was ever wonder what makes you attractive? I was like, actually, I never thought about that question, but um, yeah. So <laughs> can you dish about that a little bit? Like what makes someone attractive? Um, I think it's subjective. Like, to, I mean, one person could look at you and think you're so cool and beautiful. And the next person could think you're lame and dumb. But I think that if you want to know what makes you attractive, like really want to know why you're physically attractive, why your personality is attractive. Like I said earlier, the world is a mirror and you can only perceive in others what you perceive in yourself. So if you have like someone you look up to that you're like, wow, this person is so cool. They're so awesome. Um, you could only perceive it if it was inside of yourself and self-awareness is hard because of our ego. We don't want to see bad things or good things, you know, and if you struggle with self-awareness, if you want to know what makes you attractive, look at what you admire in others, because that's something you have inside of yourself that wants to be developed essentially. Yeah, yeah. that's great. That's very nice. Yeah. People feel good about themselves because you probably know a lot of great people, a lot of people that you do find attractive or interesting or charming or whatever qualities that work for you. Yeah, it's really true. There's not a lot of separation. It's just maybe you don't honor it yet in yourself. But it's there. That's it's true because some people like I could think someone's really cool and awesome and really look up to them, but I could ask, like, I don't know, my sister, my friend, and they would have the opposite opinion and they wouldn't even think about the things I'm thinking about them. Each person's perception is kind of different. And I think like, and did you have something to say? I felt like it's something to say. Yeah, about because it. as soon as you said that, I thought, oh, that's really interesting because if your sister and friend you're having a great response to somebody and you ask, you're like, oh my God, isn't that person amazing? And they're like, mm. and they have some things to pick out. That's shadow work, isn't it? So then there's something in that person they don't like that they actually don't like in themselves, but they haven't investigated that or healed that, right? Exactly. Um, and that's been like my greatest tool for self-awareness. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I feel honored being interviewed by you. Cause I know like you have, you know, life experience and probably the things I'm saying, you're like, Oh, I knew that like 30 years ago. But for me, what helped me with self-awareness, cause I struggled. I think that's why I did so many pick a cards on how people see you. And what helped me was like, okay, this certain celebrity really triggers me. And I don't like this about them. And instead of just brushing it off, I was like, but why, what is it about them that I don't like? I don't know them personally. So it's nothing to do with them. And I started like journaling and going inward and going, okay, what I don't want to see about myself is that's something that I do that I don't like, but it's easier for me to project that quality onto someone else. So I don't know, recently that has been a really good tool for self-awareness and yeah, self-discovery. Yeah. Um, that's, it's such a big point not to be brushed over. I just want to like be with that for a second because it would, the times when I've taken that on as a project, like, let me clean up my life. Right. <laughs> and even things you think, oh, that happened a long time ago. And, you know, I'm okay with it. I'm okay. I mean, we really carry around so much energetic garbage and it's amazing how easy it is to become unaware of all the stuff we brushed under the carpet that actually still exists. And I know, and I'm sure I could use another round of this in my life when I've really taken this on and just like, oh, like looked so deeply, what's my part in this? How am I like this? And in the beginning, it's not always so easy to see Oh, I'm not like that. I don't do it like that. I'm not like that at all. But if you take, like you're talking about that quality, the essence of something that really freaking triggers you and then say, okay, you know, let's say somebody's loud. I don't know. I'm trying to think of some example, but let's say somebody's loud and it's just, oh, I can't stand this person. They're always so loud every time I'm around them. And I'd rather just not be around them or you judge them or gossip about them. And if you really just take a moment, even a meditation or to write, 
like you're saying, and say, where in my life might, might I be showing up when I'm loud? Okay, maybe it doesn't manifest like I'm at a party socially, but maybe if I don't get my way at a bank, the way I've learned to handle it or get what I want is by being loud or with waiters or something like that. So they get so embarrassed, they finally give me what I want. Something like that, if you follow that line, and you start to see that, you know, there's this incredible leveling that takes place of, oh God, I do that too. Oh God, it doesn't look like how they do it. But I really don't like that quality in me. I really don't want to be that anymore. I want to let that go and to surrender that because there's got to be a better way, a kinder way. And I believe that is true with all things that people do that trigger us or situations that did not work out. Like it's so much easier to see our part in the party, what we keep bringing to a party and how we're manifesting stuff to release it and make a different outcome in the future. I agree with everything you, you just said. Like, um, I think your, your higher self is equality of everything you admire in other people put together. Whoa. That's so cool. I, yeah. That's so cool. Okay. I know you have more to say, but I just want to stop on that one. Your higher self is a quality, your best qualities and all the beautiful things you see in other people. Mic drop. Beautiful. Please keep going. Um, I know personally, when I was unhealed, I would always see like, cause I have a lot of trauma like everyone else, but before I healed from that trauma, I would notice like, why is it that I can't point out anything nice about people? And mm. I realized it's cause I can't point out anything nice about myself. So when you are like, okay, who am I supposed to be in this world? What is my destiny? Who is the person I'm supposed to be? what I found on my journey of self-discovery blooming into my adulthood, trying to become Anita Serene is everything I admire in a bunch of different people. If I put it all together, those that's the character of who you're meant to be in this life. And that's the fun of self-discovery. And like your lower self is like, or the things that are unhealed are all the bad stuff. So mm. And tell me about your name, because I know you weren't born Anita Serene. I know at one time, I mean, I kind of like the Stargirl, aka Stargirl, the Practical Witch. That's pretty cool. And then Anita Serene, but you were born Helena or Helena, right? Faith? Um, I don't want to disclose my birth name, but um, <laughs> for different reasons, um, but Anita is a variation of my real name. Um, I think sometimes you don't resonate with your birth name and that's okay. You can change it. <laughs> Do you know. use numerology to get to your new name? Um, actually, I didn't use numerology. Uh, it was sort of like I was going through a really difficult period, my Saturn return. I've been struggling with a lot of depression and uh, being alone for the first time after struggling with codependency. Um, and I was just, you know, like dealing with my parents getting older and having to face mortality and like just adult stresses I've never had to face before going into my late thirties and now turning 29 in two days. Um, and it just felt so hard. So I just created this I asked the universe what my name, I just felt like my name was out there and God delivered me this name. And every time I was going through a really difficult situation, like I just felt like I couldn't take it. I would just go, Anita Serene, Anita Serene, Anita Serene, kind of like Beetlejuice, Beetle, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. And it would just be like, my, the calmness came over and I was just brave. I was just like all those qualities I wanted to be. And um, yeah, that's why I, changed it so oh I love that I love so it energetically had the vibration that made a difference in you like a spell yeah yeah mm. yeah when you say you're a 250 year old witch seer mystic what do you mean by that intrigued what does that mean um that's the age I give 
I give my soul, which isn't like a flex or anything. I know it sounds like a flex. I just, I never felt like, you know, like I had a light spirit that just could be young and I carefree. I always felt like I had the weight of a 250 year old soul. Um, have you been this in a lot of lifetimes? Have you been a mystic and a seer? Is this just like a through line for you in a lot of lifetimes? Um, yeah, I, I feel like I've done this in a past life for sure. I definitely do. I think anything that you pick up, I think anything that you either pick up fast or you feel dedicated to learning for some reason in this life is definitely a sign of a past life gift and talent that's like stored in your energetic being. Mm. Yeah. What about other planets? Like, I assume you believe in life on other planets. You know, what's funny is um, I used to, but uh, recently, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, but I'm open. I'm open to it. Do you believe that? So much. Yeah. I, I was a big eye roller forever. And then, um, yeah, just, I don't know. I had this huge awakening and, and as soon as I did, then I started watching all these interviews on Gaia TV, um, with people who channel extraterrestrials and, I just, I don't know, my being went, God, this is truth. This is truth. And then I really opened myself to that knowledge and the universe continued to bring me tremendous, I mean, so much proof, so much. I've seen spacecraft now and I've had a lot of experiences and yes, I very much believe it. And I was thinking earlier, Anita, when you were saying, that you've kind of had these crappy readings. To me, that, that's crappy. If somebody's just telling you bad stuff that you don't want to hear because there's so much obviously amazing about you. And I, something I did this year is I had a galactic reading where somebody told me the inception of my soul. And then every planet I've been on since then, <laughs> it leveled the playing field. Like it took any kind of Akashic reading or reading, reading, like, on crack. It was amazing because it made so much sense why I do what I do and some of the components of my personality and even the music I do, like it was incredible. And so I was thinking for you earlier when you're saying about the readings, like, Ooh, I would love you to have a galactic reading. And maybe so much of this would make sense. You know, who I would love that, that I would be so open and so excited for that. Yes. Uh, what star system uh, do you know if you're like from Lyria or Pleiades or? I do, in fact. Um, so the inception of my soul is Elohim. You know what that means? What does it mean? Elohim is under God. It is the angels under God. They are the co-creators. And um, the first time I heard that was from somebody else. And I'm like, oh, really? That's kind of, that's kind of lofty. And so I poo-pooed it. And um, it was actually a very reputable person. And then like a year and a half later, I had this galactic reading and she said, oh, wow, you're an Elohim. And I'm like, okay, now I'm paying attention. Like you said, synchronicity kept coming up. So Elohim. And then when I decided to go into other galaxies, Andromeda a lot, Antares, Scorpio, Stargate, Lyra. Lyra, 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 Lyra. <laughs> the name of our band is Lions of Lyra. So a lot of time with the lion people. That makes so much sense to me. Cassiopeia, Andromeda, Constellation, Pleiades. Yep, 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 yep. I, and I right now in this life feel very strong connection to, to the Pleiadians. And then, um, yeah, a bunch here on good old earth. <laughs> like Atlantis and stuff like that, like ancient Lemuria. Stories. Yeah, Egypt, which makes so much sense, Temple of Isis, because I feel strong connection to um, Mary Magdalene. I feel very strong connection to sacred sexuality. And um, then Lemuria, yeah. Wow. Fascinating stuff, huh? 
Yeah, I really felt that when you said Egypt. I was like, oh, I can see that. I can really see that like Cleopatra energy. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Well, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to making notes too. I wanted to ask you about that and I'm going to ask you about that. But um I'm going to make notes cuz there's a couple of things I want to connect you with after about the book and then uh the galactic reading. Um yeah, so I notice and I kind of love this. So I notice while you're uh talking to me and just talking in general and sharing with the audience that you're writing and that pen is always with you. I already feel this is a huge part of your process. Can you talk about that and what you write and what that is for you? <laughs> Honestly, it's just, it helps me be more present. So I'm not like, you know, out of my body, like floating off. It just helps, um, make, make, help me be more present in the conversation. So I wish I could say I was like doing something like, <laughs> <laughs> it's just doodles and <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. I have, I have anxiety. I'm sure people with anxiety can relate. Like, you know, I, I, I look, honey, I totally get, I'm like, you serious? I can show oh. you. I'm so with you, but you know, there's stuff you're going to say. I, I appreciate the presence because there's stuff you're going to say to me. And there is no way, like if later I said, Oh, I really wanted to ask Anita this. And then I forgot. I'm so glad it's in front of me. And I agree, it does, it, it allows actually me to be very present with you, but at the same time, I'm taking care of business, you know, it's a good guide. So no, I like the, the list thing. I like it the is lists are good. I'm all about it. <laughs> I swear my boyfriend makes so much fun of me and I'm like, dude, I would forget everything. Like lists keep me on track. I'm a bit of a, I'm a little bit of a free spirit. And so it's, it's a very grounding discipline thing for me that I can actually fulfill my shopping list. And I can actually, you know, my to-do list, I have to do that to set up my day. Cause seriously, I'd be out. I don't know what I'd be doing, but it does. It's a good grounding mechanism. Absolutely. People who don't do lists are the crazy people. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> list people unite. <laughs> yes. Okay. So I wanted to ask you also about ascension. What is your understanding about what's going on right now with ascension? Mm, um, I just, I feel like intuitively, energetically, we're just entering a time where we're all connecting with our idea of God. And like, that's been a universal theme. So for some people, it's going to be, you know, like um, collecting with their home planet or star system some people mm. it's connecting with uh meditation some people it's it's god you know i think this is a time of healing where we're all collectively connecting to our own personal idea of god as a way to heal what do you predict is coming up what's what's 2023 going to be like and beyond i feel personally like hold on to your panties because <laughs> I feel like this change is not going to stop for anyone or anything. Like we're deep in it and not, I mean, look at me, I'm doing the predictions. Forgive me. I mean, no, just, I'm cu I'm so curious to know what you're feeling too. Okay. Thank you. That's so kind. And then I really want to acquiesce to you. So uh, yeah, I really sense there is a lot coming down the pike and I don't mean that to sound like ugh, dread. It's going to be terrible. I think there's a lot of change. Most people don't like change, but you know, welcome to being human. It really is what it's all about. You fall in love, you fall out of love. You get married, you get divorced. You know, but, but you know, you have friends. Sometimes you choose not to be with them and you get other friends. Life is about constant change. So yeah, sorry. Sometimes I hear things. So what I'm hearing is it's really important, the skill of letting go and surrender. I am working on this one, I swear, big time. It hasn't been my strength. But I think letting go and surrender, having a sense of flow and just going with the flow is going to be really big and not having, not putting labels on things. This is happening. This is bad. This is happening. It means bad things because it really doesn't. I think it's like if we were in a, um, 
a statue and we're inside chipping to get out and be born, to be free, to be like, literally, you were talking about how beautiful and powerful we actually are and to be that, to be all of that. And that there's going to be some life stuff to go through and some earthly stuff and big humanity stuff collectively. I really think it's going to keep coming and just to let go and trust. And by the way, the greatest contribution anybody can be right now, anybody is who you be inside, what you choose inside, the kind of light you bring, the kind of love you put out in the world, the care, the kindness, because it may seem like, oh, but it's just my small world. That's everything about how you be with you and how you, even with a clerk, you know, in a register or somebody on the street or an elevator, like that kindness can be ripples right now. It is so important how we show up. My 25 cents. I completely agree with you. Yeah. And I honestly, I, I, everything I had to say was very much in alignment with what you said. Um, I think if you have something to offer to the world and you're a healer for now until the next four years, put yourself out there because the light that you offer could help someone from, like we said earlier in the show from losing hope. So this is the time for healers and for us to shine and help people transition away from the tragedy of the last few years. Yeah, absolutely. I know. And I know people feel like I need a break. <laughs> I need to coast for a while. And I, yeah, take a vacation at the beach for sure. I <laughs> do whatever you yes. need to do to create that. Like you can create that. Um, don't look to, to the world to create that for you, but yeah, do what you need to do and it will really help. And if you can't meditate, then, I mean, I don't know that meditation is for everybody. Um, I have difficulty meditating, just like getting my, my particles relaxed in one place, but I do other things to chill out, chillax. So find your thing, you know? Could be walking, could be in the forest, it could be music, could be a doggy. Do you I'm have seeing the anti Yeah, I have I have um a dog named Lisa. She's my best friend. Yeah. Is she the cutest ever? She is the cutest puppy best friend dog ever. Animals are the best. Oh, my dog is my best friend too. I love her so much. I can't even believe how much love you could have for a creature. Uh, what kind of dog is she? She's or Shelby, she's a girl and she's a cockapoo. And she's so cute. Honestly, everywhere I go, everybody knows her name, not necessarily mine, like Shelby. They love her. She runs right up to people and gives them hugs. So outgoing, so extroverted, full of love, joy, happy, happy all the time. Hilarious. Very fun. Aww. Yeah. She's fierce. And yours? Oh, my puppy is, um, she's big, hairy, and she means well, but she's really clumsy and she likes to jump on people. And <laughs> so she's a little, she's, she's, she thinks she's a small dog, but she's not. What kind of dog is she? I think she's like a lab, just like one of the giant mixed dogs. And what color? White. So she's got long, you said she's hairy. She's got long white hair. Yeah, kind of like I call her Lisa Bear because she's like a big bear, white bear. <laughs> she's like, yeah. She sleeps with you? No, she's she's kind of independent. Um, sorry, my snow shovelers are outside of my house. They didn't tell me they were coming and they're calling my phone to because I have to pay them. So <laughs> and like there was like a blizzard and I didn't know they were coming and now they're like, calling my phone and like all right cool. the snow looking at me like I'll tell you what me? I'm gonna handle it on this and I love it I first of all you should bring them on the show I'd love to have them right now because that would be so <laughs> hilarious these guys with caps and I'm sure big burly coats you pay them and I'm gonna start talking how's that and then you come back when you're ready so that's we we're just going to do things in reverse so it's kind of perfect right we go with the flow this is what surrender looks like in the moment Here's what I want to, you to know about Anita Serene. 
Anita is going to be speaking at the LA Conscious Life Expo. If you have never heard of it, mamma mia, where have you been? So this is going to be enlightenment. And for those of you who've heard of it, welcome back. I go there every year. I think it's been going on for at least 20 years. And this is, ah, it's so beautiful. It takes place at the Hilton LAX every year in February. And next year, it's going to be February 10th through the 13th. And it is this collection of some of the greatest speakers, seers, mystics, names that you know, huge names. And so it's going to be in the show notes so you can join us um, because it's a really long URL. I could say it out loud, but you won't love me. It's, it's really long, but it's a Conscious Life Expo. It'll be in the show notes. You can just click. You can get tickets. Now, here's what I want you to know. You can fly in from anywhere. 15, at least 1,000 people attend through the weekend. It is off the hook. I never, never, never miss it. And I'll get to see Anita. She'll be doing her thing. And if for whatever reason you're in a position wherever you live or your situation, I can't get away those days, then you can live stream it. So you can get tickets no matter what. I can promise you every hour there's somebody else doing a presentation or a talk. It's so cutting edge. And it's like this enormous download of yummy information and incredible people you want to know, work with, follow, or just enjoy them for that weekend. So did you pay your people? <laughs> Are they good? Yeah, I, I just sent them a Venmo. So it's all good. Yay. All right. And thanks for dealing with that snow people. So tell us what are you talking about? What's going to be your deal at the Conscious Life Expo? So I'm going to be, if you want to learn the language of numbers and start making interpretations in your own life about the numbers that you're seeing, what they mean, I'm going to be teaching about that and also common animal symbols as well. How beautiful. Okay. So you got a yeah. little taste of Rooney here and are you going to be there the whole weekend? Yes, I am the whole weekend. So. And you'll have a booth as well? Um. I am speaking for two nights. I believe I know I should know I it's, uh, but I'm, I'm going to be there the whole weekend. So you'll see me if I'm not speaking, I'm going to be walking around, taking in the information of the other speakers there. So totally. Yeah. And it's, it's no problem because if somebody just clicks on the link I'll have in the notes, you will see immediately all the speakers. You could actually click on their faces. You'll see Anita there and it will say exactly when she's speaking, what she's speaking about, what room she'll be in. So it's all handled for you. You don't have to figure anything out. They've got this. Um, if somebody was in a situation and they wanted to ethically attract somebody that they desired, um, and I kind of love this. I just find this all really interesting. How can we use essential oils to do that? And I emphasize ethically. I really believe in that, uh, right? Um, well, I would say that uh, jasmine oil, yeah, yeah, Lang, I can't even pronounce Lang Lang oil, but it's spelled Y-L-A-N-G oil. Um, those, were, those are the oils to work with. They are natural aphrodisiacs. And uh, if you want to sprinkle some of that oil on top of your red candle for passion, it will definitely work. Okay. And to make contact with our spirit guides, any recommendations? Um, plant medicine. <laughs> yeah. She said to somebody she knows uses it. Um, no, no, no. I, I did. I used, um, I used, uh, med uh, legal, well, not medical legal marijuana where I was, it was legal. Um, and I actually connected to my spirit guides by, uh, by, uh, marijuana. So wow. yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. I would have, I would not have considered that. I would have, um, yeah, that's kind of cool. Did you say something to create that happening or did it just happen on its own? No, like, um, I've never smoked weed. I mean, I know a lot of people are like this. It's not just me, but you know, some people might work for you where you don't smoke weed and it's not fun. You don't get, you don't laugh. You don't get the munchies. You just get like downloads that are kind of terrifying. Mm. Um, 
some people that works for them, but for other people, it doesn't. Everyone's different. Interesting. Yeah. And our birth date, when you're teaching numerology, it actually reveals our special talents. Is that right? Um, uh, your life path number reveals the talents you are meant to grow in this lifetime. It's your life path. So um, an innate talent that you grow through the path of your life. And you, you figure that out by adding your month, your day, and your year all together? Yes. Like, for instance, uh, um, December 17th, 1993, right? One plus two plus one plus seven plus one plus nine plus nine plus three equals. And that number that all of your numbers equal up to um, is your life path number. And your life path number, now typically, let's say it's a 14, you'd add the one and the four. So you'd always add those numbers together to get a single digit. And the only exception, and I want you to correct me, is a master number that never gets added together. Master numbers are 11, 22, 33, correct? Yes, absolutely. So the, the only ones that you wouldn't reduce are those numbers, 11, 22, and 33. Those and are I think master numbers. You shared with me you're a 33, right? Um, yeah, yeah. What does that mean? So that seems pretty big time. Um, yeah, I I I don't think like anyone is more special than the other person. I just think it means you have like you feel like you have a greater burden um mm. when it comes to lessons, challenges, or you put a greater burden on your yourself to do big things. So, um, I think, you know, Kim Kardashian has a life path 22. Wow. Um, and it's like, you can see that pressure of the 22 on her shoulders by, you know, how ambitious she is. You know, I think it's just, it's like a heavy energetic number that can either pressure you into greatness or it can completely crumble you. So I think it just means like heavier weights. Do you think that women's ever going to find consistent love, like healthy, consistent love? Women? Kim and Kim, Kim Kardashian. Um, I don't, I mean, I don't know. I, I really don't know her personally. So I don't, I don't want to say like, I don't want to comment on it because uh -huh. like, yeah, I don't know her. I just, yeah. All right. I thought maybe you'd done her numbers or something. No worries. No, no. So this is Dare to Dream. What are you, Anita, next Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams and goals? Um, I want to have a family. Mm. Yeah. I want a um, traditional home. I want a family, yeah. And then um, have kids and babies. <laughs> That's what I want. So. I love that for you. Yeah. I want to come to your wedding. <laughs> I don't know if I'll have another wedding because that's embarrassing. That would be my like third wedding, but um, I'll probably like elope, but um, <laughs> yeah. Then I want to see the pictures. Okay. I'll send you the pictures. Okay. Now, I love that for you. That's a really cool dream. And I get that. And I especially get that when you've come from trauma and you maybe haven't had that, then you have that sense of home and stability and that ongoing connection and anchor. I really love yeah. that for you. That's yeah. exactly, that's, you. it's like you read what I felt and put it into words, which is really cool, like to have your mind read. Yeah, that's exactly what I want. Yeah, I can relate, yeah. actually. I can resonate with that a lot. Yeah. yeah. So folks, if you're loving her and you want more, you can go to her YouTube channel. Also, she's, she's on TikTok and she's at her name, Anita Serene. Is there anything else here that you want to say at the end? Um, I know your 2023 is going to be better than your 2022. I feel it. And I saw it in the stars for everybody. And I'm not just saying that. Um, I'm not a sugar-coated reader. So if 2022 suck, 2023 is going to be better. Yeah. Thank you for that great news. And thank you so much for coming on the show. You've been a joy. I've really enjoyed this. I, I'm so thankful you had me. I enjoyed it too.
Mm. I end today's show with this quote from Linda Fields. You draw to you the people and events which resonate with the energy that you are radiating. You attract what you are. So be your best. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger. Thank you. Thank you so much for all your comments. I read them and I appreciate them. Send the show to somebody that you know and love or even don't love and start the love going and let them know they should watch and listen. And next week on the show, I'm going to be featuring the amazing Maria Martinez. She's a natural born healer. She helps people release lack, scarcity, and reconnect their relationship with money and wealth. Maria has this really unique ability to know your deepest desires and clear anything blocking you from stepping into your greatness. If you've been listening to us on podcasts and you would like to see me and my guest, I urge you to go to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger, spell it right, D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R. And remember, don't just dare to dream, dare to turn all your dreams into your reality.